Okay, so in D1, you need to evaluate the potential negative impacts of these innovations on businesses. Notice that he wants you to do this on businesses, not on people, not on the environment, but just on business. And you need to think about the work that you've completed so far. You've looked at the things, the physical objects, experiential interaction, aids to people, aids to society and community, and machines within the workplace. This is all stuff you've already covered, so I'm not asking you to repeat yourself. What I'm saying now is that you need to look at the potential negative impact of these things on businesses. Think about the renewal of things. Let's think about you know this, this technology you buy in and then you have to renew it every three to four years because it becomes outdated, it slows down, it doesn't have the latest uh, hardware or software requirements. The reliability of them. If your customers uh, can't use your, your website or can't use your card reader or can't use the information in your shop, what is the impact? And looking at the longevity of technology, you buy something in and you think that it's going to last for a long time and suddenly it doesn't and then you've got to buy more and what impact does that have? Naturally, a lot of the impact on business is whether or not they're making money. That's the primary goal of a business. And so we're looking at ways in which different pieces of technology can reduce their ability to make money in some way. Okay, so I'm going to use Argos as a case study here. Argos is, is a, a, a well-known retailer that you'll have probably experienced yourself at some point, the catalogue, the going into store. Well, Argos decided that they were going to leave the catalogue behind and they were going to open this new concept which was uh, screens in their store where the customers could go in and they would put into the screen the information that they wanted, a bed, a sofa or whatever it might be, and it would come up. Problem is, they didn't look at the longevity of this and people stopped using them very quickly because they could order online, the software that they had on these screens was poor, the touch screens was really poor quality and you couldn't get it to press the button you wanted, you were trying to press the letter A and the letter Q was being pressed, and so people eventually started saying, well, I'm not gonna go to Argos because I can never get what I want, I'm gonna look online. Argos has seen a, a fall in around 70% of its outlets uh, in the last five years. Even the new Argos that's been built in town in Sainsbury's the screens don't work and it's been there for 12 months. They've never really fixed this problem. And that's a really good case study example to think about when we come to think about the longevity of technology and the way that technology changes all the time and looking for the future. Technology, you can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but you can build in fail safes to mitigate against the, the technology progressing faster than the technology that you've installed. There are some other things to think about as well. The applications of the internet of everything, such as body and health, home and garden, city and neighborhood, industry and the environment. Let's think about the potential negative impacts of failures on businesses within these sectors. Like Every one of those sectors has got a business that, that will have an impact of technology. So I think about customer satisfaction. If a customer isn't happy because of the technology that they've been trying to use, they, they're not going to return. And without returning custom, like I've said to you before in lesson, your business is going to really, really struggle. You can't rely on a, a constant flow of brand new customers. You want to attract interest from the right people, not undesirable parties. Putting yourself out online means you're going to attract a much wider amount of interest than you would if you were just one shop on a high street. And that can have problems as well with trolling and other things such as negative reviews. And that's something you could talk about. Let's think about healthcare for a second. What happens if this healthcare fails because the, the correct procedure hasn't been followed in, in installing the internet of everything devices? Think about the the pacemakers, the Wi-Fi pacemakers, the uh, the diabetes checkers, things like that. What happens if they suddenly stop working or go offline? What happens if test and trace doesn't work with COVID? What happens if the QR code isn't scanned properly and it doesn't log where you've been and somebody you've been sat next to has COVID and then you don't realize? What are the impacts on the business side of things? Not on the individual, remember, on the business. Okay, and then poor web domain and hosting. Been on a website where it doesn't load properly or the data's out of, uh, out of date, it doesn't make sense anymore, it's a little bit old. What's your feelings? The first place we go to is Google, and we Google where we want, what we want, where we want it from, so on and so forth. If Google provides us with a website and the website is wrong, do we go to that business? Do we return to Google? Do we try something else? Failing automation within the manufacturing business. Easiest one for you to talk about here is Amazon. 
have you ever heard stories about somebody ordering uh, AirPods or a, an Apple Mac and receiving cat food instead? That's a failed automation. What is the impact? Do people not go back to Amazon? Do people look elsewhere? What's the impact on the business? Now remember, Amazon is a second party seller. So all the products on Amazon, they're not made by Amazon. Some of them are, but a lot of them aren't. And so suddenly Amazon screw up and the business that that was affected is not necessarily Amazon, it's the company that provide their products to Amazon. Breach of security and GDPR, what's the impact of that? Have a look at case studies from Sony, from the PlayStation hack a few years ago, from Nationwide hack a few years ago. Uh, what was the impact? People left Nationwide, they decided they didn't want to be with them anymore. People left TalkTalk Talk when they were hacked about two or three years ago. People stopped using those services and that leads to a reducing revenue and therefore it impacts their business.